Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Open Mic Podcast. I'm your host, Mark. The podcast is here for people on the open mic circuit, whether you're a comedian, an MC, a promoter, or a tutor, or anybody in theory who has any involvement in this industry. But if you're a comedy fan who also enjoys spending their time in pub basements seeing the possible stars of the future, or even better, if you want to join in on this open mic circuit and want a bit of first hand warning on what to expect, then this is the place for you. I'm very pleased to welcome today's guest, who is a very man, very busy man, gigging a lot. And when he's not gigging, he may well be in the audience. He seems to be a real supporter of live comedy. So, top marks to him. So, you think you're funny semi finalist from 2023? And he can be regularly found headlining at GMB with every, and being everyone's favourite uncle, a film fanatic, and loves a water slide. Please welcome Jim Hooker. <laughs> loves a water slide. <laughs> That's ambitious. <laughs> I like to bring an intro to everybody that comes onto this, a part of their, their set. Yeah. That always makes me laugh. I yeah. was looking for the particular funny ones from yours, and I loved the... Uh... I was the only one. <laughs> no, no, the thought of the DeLorean. Skin oh, locks, gone. Yeah, uh, yeah, I like that. That's uh, that, that, again, for, well, this comes from a true story. Not a DeLorean. There wasn't that, that didn't happen. <laughs> but yeah. So how are you doing? Yeah, good. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Looking forward to the the year ahead and what does it bring? Oh, uh, I think so. <laughs> I think I'm looking forward to it. Um, I mean, last year was uh, I had a really good like last year, so it'll be good. It'll be interesting to see if this one tops it. I think it'll be, you know, just everything is is cool. Because last have... year was your first year in stand up, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. How about you, Mark? What's your 2024 looking like? My 2024 looking like is. Uh, trying to cram in as many gigs as i can feasibly get away with yeah feasibly and, <laughs> and and try and get this thing off the ground and see if this works that they're, they're my things in terms of uh aims i did i've contemplated entering so you think you're funny yeah but uh because i just about slip into the criteria just yeah. about um but i don't know we'll, we'll see we'll see what it brings up but like um so you've been into You've been doing stand up for a year. Mm -hmm. So the first question is always <laughs> going to be how, why, <laughs> how, and, why, <laughs> and why, what, what made you join this, this circus? Good, good question. Um, and it's a bit of a boring answer, really. I, um, I just need, I just wanted to get out of the house and do something fun, if honestly. Like, so I, I started off with, um, hoopla improv like a beginner's improv thing um okay i'd i just got divorced i had uh i just gotten out of a like 13 year marriage um i say gotten out of right <laughs> you know it's it's it was uh uh it, you know actually my my ex-wife's good friend and she's been very supportive in this as well which has been cool um but uh i i just kind of i'd moved i was living in newcastle came back down to london where i grew up i, I grew up where i am now <laughs> And I just wanted to get out of the house and do something fun, right? Just, yeah, just, just, just do something. So I did the Hoopla Improv, um, beginners course, and it was good fun. Met met a few funny people, uh, and then liked it. So uh, carried on. And I and I kind of the the instructor. Uh, are we allowed to name names on here? You can you okay name you can name anybody to right, anything good. you want because I've got some grievances that I need to wear. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, uh, one of the instructors was a guy called Mandy Singh, who's a very, very funny comedian, and he recommended uh, as he recommended the Hooper course, but also recommended uh, Logan Murray, uh, Logan Murray's course. So for a while, mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll give that a go. That sounds like fun. Um, and the ambition was to just go on stage once. That was it. Just, just go on stage and do yeah. stand up once. Say I did it, got it out of my system, and then I could go back to my, my day job. Um, so I went and did that, and then I've just been gigging ever since. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just the way it is. Yeah, I think I think I think a lot of people probably have that same. It's, it sounds very similar to me. Did a course, only intended to do one gig, and then got such a buzz off that one gig. It was like, well, how do I do more? That first gig. That, that's the uh, that's the one. Yeah, um, I I remember messaging a um uh. A famous comedian about this who i they kind of pushed me into doing it and i said to them you know does can you ever get that high of the first gig again i feel like i'm constantly chasing 
He says it'll come eventually, but he said, but don't expect it to come in the first year. Did he think you were David Baddiel? <laughs> like, <laughs> Ironically, how... this guy has never met me. Oh, right, um, okay. He's a, um, a you, you probably know um, a guy, his name's Elliot Steele. Mm-hmm. Um, I found, it's a bit of a long-winded story, and it's kind of part of the reason how I got into comedy, was I saw him support Russell Kane at a local gig. Yeah. Uh, before I was into comedy, and I then kind of went on this rabbit hole of finding sort of non non famous is is the wrong term, but not high end, not high end's not even the right term. You know, not not Saturday night comedians. Right. Yeah. I, I found a load, and um, I found a podcast that he hosts with a guy called Michael Odawali. Yeah. Yeah. B Tech philosophers, and <laughs> uh, I just was at the point where I was trying to decide whether I should do this or not, and um, I just sent them guys a message and said, "How did you get into it? Did you do a course? And if you." if you didn't and, and know people can you recommend a course and their their response basically was go for it enjoy it try it have a bit of fun don't take it too seriously yeah um and no we know nobody that runs courses <laughs> right okay yeah. and that and there's loads actually isn't it I mean, yeah there, talk, every time i talk every time i ask someone oh did you take a course they go oh yeah yeah and it's a different course that i haven't heard of yeah and yeah. um that that's kind of where I then kind of messaged him after and said, thank you for giving me that little nudge that said, yeah, just go for it. So I did. And then can you get that high again? And I don't know. I'm still struggling to find it. I have the odd gig where I go, yeah, yeah, that went good. But I don't know. Can you ever beat the first time? <laughs> yeah, I think, I, think, I think you can. Although that first high is something else, isn't it? I mean, I think I, so I, my, my first gig, so... I did the Logan Murray, I started the Logan Murray course. I the last time I stood on a stage is when I played the Ghost of Christmas Present in my year six Christmas like <laughs> thing. And uh, <laughs> like this was years and years ago. Um, and I was, I was petrified. I was absolutely, I, I, I was starting to go to the Monday nights in the uh, Museum of Comedy in the basement where the, where the course is. And I was, I was fixated on standing in front of a load of people and I just didn't really want to do it. Uh, so I thought, I just need to get a gig out of the way. So in the first couple of weeks, uh, Logan said, you know, go out and get a gig. Just go out and get a gig. Go and find five minutes somewhere. So I kind of took that as a, you should go do that now. Yeah. Um, you don't have a choice in this. Go do it. So I thought, well, okay. <laughs> now, uh, do you, are you okay naming nights on here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah can they, you can. Okay, they, you're free to say whatever okay, you want. Yeah, yeah, because uh, yeah. Uh, so there's um uh so uh, where a lot of comedians have their first gig is uh the, the Lions Den in um, Shaftesbury Avenue. Okay. Um, so it's in like a a nightclub that at the end they turn the music up to about a billion decibels <laughs> <laughs> to kick you out. Um, and the way they the way they work is is if you don't have i think it was something like five bringers if you don't have five bringers then you have to wait at the door and the first 10 get get right. a spot because that was the first i just searched for turn up go, uh, open mic night on google um and i turned up there at like five o'clock for an eight o'clock show <laughs> and i was I, I nearly didn't get the thing people would come down from like liverpool and on the train it was it was crazy and i was like oh wow i don't really want to do this every week you know at the, at the time i think oh yeah one a week that's quite a lot right? yeah yeah um uh and i had no idea what i was doing <laughs> so <laughs> I, I you know that i i kind of had a routine in my head that i'd been working like i i kind of written down whilst i was doing the improv stuff before the course um and it clocked in when i was practicing at home and probably about five and a half minutes yeah so when the other comedian was talking to them and they were saying you know like what are you, you going to do i was like oh it, it, they won't mind if i go over by like 30 seconds right and they went no no at, f- at four you'll get the light and i was like what's that right <laughs> what, yeah. what's that so they explained to me like at, at five minutes they're gonna have you know someone will pretty much try and edge me off the stage and it'll be distracting and everything like that so there was me and this uh, other guy, uh, Christian, who um, was he, he was a really nice, funny guy. He we went around to the pub around the corner when we got our place, and then 
I try to cut down, right. I try to write out the routine and, and cut some stuff down. Yeah. Um, and then when I was in there, um, when I was actually waiting in the audience, like, like absolutely shitting my pants <laughs> because I didn't know, I didn't know how this was going to go. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> I, I just thought this isn't funny anymore. This isn't a funny routine. I'm just going to go and make a fool of myself. Yeah. So, as I got up on, I got called up, went up on the stage, and I decided then, as I got on the stage, to just ditch the routine, um, completely ditch it, wow, and just, and just use some stuff that I'd been messing around with the day before, in, in the course, yeah. And then actually, there was some ad, ad lib stuff as well, which is in my set now, um, from that first gig, mm-hmm. and it was, and there were hecklers, there were people shout like p- nice hecklers like joining yeah. in, um, and this guy, this other guy who who had come to this open mic night he was like an office like david brent type guy and had paid basically put the company credit card behind the bar and had his whole office come down to watch him so that night there was about 60 odd people there and they were all pissed they were all pissed and they he'd planted like little crowd work things like from his friends in the audience because he just wanted to be like the the funny boss um but because they were all drunk and they were all laughing uh came off the stage they said oh do you want to come back next week uh did and i didn't sleep for two days like i yep. was just completely buzzed i was just like what what just happened yes. what just happened here but but yeah it was a funny it was a weird night and um yeah but a lot of that's where a lot of comedians do their first gig a lot of people have got strong opinions of that night um but that's where a lot of comedians do their first gig and i haven't yeah. i haven't done it since the second time i've done it I did. i've never heard of that one actually no i have a little look my um my my first gig outside of the um the showcase that we did was um uh comedy virgins because mm. it was the easiest one to get onto because yeah, it was yeah. just okay I'm paying to go on but I get that back in bar bill which is fine bring yeah. one person job done and you know you're on you're not thinking oh am I going to get on or not and it was probably the most disastrous gig I've ever had and I nearly oh. threw everything away. <laughs> Oh no! What was your, that was your first gig outside. The, that was my. The that was my. That was my first gig after the showcase. Yeah, I, that was. I did. I did the same after the showcase. I did. I booked in for Comedy Virgins. Um, because and as well, like their their setup is so slick. It's yeah. It's it's good. It's a you know you get it feels it's a comedy club. You know it's got the it's got the seating. It's got the cameras. It's got the cool yeah. cab thing in the frame. And you look at. I remember the first time I looked at. it, I was like, oh wow, this is like. This is this is cool. Like this yeah, is a yeah. proper this is a proper comedy club. This is what everyone's going to be like. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two weeks later, maybe not. Yeah, but now, it's the other way now. Now I like the dingy basements. <laughs> yeah, I, I found that comedy virgins was because um, I turned up and I said, "Look, this is my second ever time on stage. You know, give me a nice spot." And they went, "It's drawn out of a hat randomly." Yeah, yeah, oh, just, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, my mate was there, and I said, "I I know what's going to happen." We yeah, know what's going to happen. We just don't. First. We don't. I might as well just go and stand there now. And yeah, it was me, number one, and oh. um, opener on your second gig. Yep, that's pretty cool. They they took no notice <laughs> of the fact that I said this is my second time on stage. Yeah, and mine. They introduced me with the wrong name, <laughs> so it was just like oh, no. this isn't going to go well. And it it really didn't. I I I basically wrote a whole new set for it. Yeah, rather than use the showcase one. And yeah. that was a huge mistake. Um, yeah, things didn't go great. Hey, but sometimes, sometimes those moments pay off. You know, where you just you go up there with hardly anything, and it just works, and the stars align, and you save yourself weeks of testing. Yeah, I, but the thing is, I I know when I look back at that routine, it was actually I think it's actually quite a good routine, but it just yeah. hadn't been practiced enough, and there was um. There was a slight distraction in the audience in that there was a uh, there was a young man, I, I guess maybe twenties, uh, mid twenties, and he had Down syndrome. He was in the front yeah. row of the crowd, yeah. And throughout his whole life, he's probably been told swearing's bad, yeah. And I, you swear within I was swearing, and he was kind of like I could see him covering his ears whenever I swore, yeah. It was oh. like a natural reaction, and I, and I think. For some reason in my head, that forced me to, because I wasn't getting the laughs I was expecting, hmm. probably through arrogance, thinking, oh, this is great. And then um, I started to swear a bit more, and which 
created the made the situation worse yeah, yeah and i just to... <laughs> a downward spiral of oh what are you doing yeah yeah oh and... no those 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 moments are just awful aren't they where yeah where you you try and and it comes from for me like, there's times where i've had those those moments where it's just not working and then i decide and this is purely for your inexperience, you know, you think, no, I'm going to trust my, trust my joke, trust what yep. I've been doing. And it just makes things worse. Yes. Oh, hundred percent. And yeah, it was, I mean, after that, I, I said to my mate, I said, I'm not sure this is for me. Yeah. I'll take the showcase and I'll call that a day. But yeah, I, I had another five gigs booked in, uh, culminating in a gong show, up, uh, up the Creek. Yeah, and I said I'll stick to these ones. I'll, I'll see these ones out and see what happens. Yeah, and I, I kind of joined the uh, did a we are funny a GMB and, and and started feeling like I was a bit more comfortable and started getting some decent feedback and and then it's just like yeah I'll just carry on for a bit and see what happens now. Yeah, because that's the funny thing about the open mic circuit, isn't it? A lot of people it see them as just gigs but they're not it's actually a comedy course <laughs> yeah you know you're there and there are other comics there you're trying stuff out and because we all we all have that kind of want to be funny every time yes but we all understand that that's just impossible yeah so so actually this is just a good place to try out weird stuff that you've been thinking about and yeah uh, and see if it sticks that's that's one of the the biggest piece of advice i'd ever give anyone is that if you turn up to a, a night where there's just comedians there's very few audience members it's not going to be a great night so trying to if if there's if the comedians before you haven't been that great never ever ever think i can save the night by doing my set because i know it's funny i've had laughs in the past yeah. use that night as your exercise to do whatever the hell you want yeah. crowd work whatever do something completely different because yeah. nobody can judge you on that night there's no audience member that's going to go oh he was crap i'm never going to see him again yeah yeah absolutely you know? and, yeah, the, and those those comedians in the crowd will probably understand what you're actually trying to do as well yeah yeah and they'll see you again because yeah. you know i i tell I, I i do if i've not done a night before i'll tend to not try new stuff and do the tried and tested stuff as more of a you know and i don't know if that's a good idea or not it's just a natural a natural reaction to me like please please don't think i'm shit yes uh, and, then, and then and then so like lure them into coming, inviting me back so then i can be shit <laughs> that's the, yeah yeah I'm sort of baiting them in with good material no no that's that's, that's good so go on then what's your worst ever performance oh god i was I, the thing is there's a list, <laughs> there's a list. <laughs> there must be there... one that stands out even if it's just for one little thing that went wrong or i think i think it might have had to have been um the uh, up the creek gong show yeah it was it was a disastrous gig for me you know, and, and as well, <clears throat> it's never the audience's fault. It's always your fault. Is an important lesson that I've learned, right? You know, if the audience are if the audience are down, it's not their fault. They're there to watch comedy, right? It's, yeah. It's everyone else's job. It's the club. It's the MC. It's the it's the the comedians to to make them laugh, not to laugh at us because we're standing there. Um, which is a good example of why <laughs> this gig was so bad for me. So I um I turned up. Um, there was a bit of an admin error. I was on last, Ooh. and that like no, yeah, that, that goes on for a little while. Um, <clears throat> and there was uh, someone in the crowd who was like being quite aggressive towards the comedians, and because it's a gong show, you know, they were winding up the you know the, the yeah, audience yeah. member. It's just the way it is. And about halfway through the night, I got a bit cocky because I saw some people go through, and I was like, oh, "This is going to be fine." Yeah, uh, and that was a big mistake. Like I'll. <laughs> Never, never take any of this stuff for granted. Uh, and I went on last, and the opening jokes kind of worked. And I was like, okay, but everyone was a bit tired, and I was a bit tired, and probably a little bit overconfident. Uh, and then I have a joke that can really split a room. And I was actually I've taken it out of my set now. Yeah. Um, and this particular audience member just flew off the handle um, when it happened. And I'm pretty sure 
that well because I, I know up the creek they have that the management have a button don't they they, they can they can press yeah. uh, and all of a sudden as soon as she kind of kicked off and like security kind of moved in from the back I mean she really did go they just hit hit the button and I was done and yeah uh, and I just left I I laughed the whole way home because it was just the weirdest you know the weirdest thing I was like this happened the big bang happened yeah and now I was standing here on a stage <laughs> with someone shouting at me and then the lights all went off and I had to go home <laughs> that was it's just like it's such a weird weird scenario yeah but yeah that was i think that might have been my way i've got i've got a couple that i'm quite happy to share no you can share as much as you want um there was one uh there was one i'd had a bit of a i'd had a bit of a, like one of those days you know which is one of those like shitty days uh and then i got and i and i and i went and i went and started my set and i was opened up and i, I thought okay just punch it up and then it just dropped a bit and then i just forgot my set I just completely forgot. It's the one and only time I completely forgot my set, and someone in the audience, actually a very another funny comic in the audience, had to remind me where I was in my set. Yeah, because they knew what was coming next, and I was just like, oh, "Thanks, <laughs> brilliant!" <laughs> kind of, um, and uh, that that haunts me a little bit. That one. <laughs> See that 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 remark. You were there that night when I did that at BFF. Yeah, but you 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 handled it really well. You kind of and I actually that's one of the things I've learned is that with this, and you were a really good example of this. Is that you just owned it. Yeah, you just you you played with the audience with it, and and they got it. And because as well, you know, there's a lot of comedians in the audience because it's a it's a you know the open gig. Then they they get it, and they've been there. So yeah, yeah. I like that. If I like when a comedian's forgotten what they want to say. And they get a little cheer from the audience. I, I think <laughs> yeah. that's I do I do like that. Yeah, that was probably one of my most memorable nights. <laughs> and it was I I, I mean the, the hosts there, I um I can't remember what they got no names are, forgive me, but they were lovely. Yeah, yeah, they are. They're that that gig is so nice and friendly. It's yeah, a, it's a great gig. I just remember the old oh, you know, that's why we don't have a tight a tight five. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, it's something you do sometimes, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes you know, sometimes you're just, just you, you know, that you're just doing something not right, and but a tight five can be a shit five somewhere yeah. else. Oh, very is. much so. Yeah. So, what about your best ever? Oh, then this was tough because there's a few. There's a there's a real few, and I think the top the top one has to be King Gong in July. Uh, it was that's my that was the top like i never i never felt like i remember i think it's jim jeffrey said something like you never forget your first big laugh at the comedy store and i opened up i sound really <laughs> like it's sort of like oh yeah you never forget your first big laugh at the comedy store because i'm really not like this right so but and, and i kind of it's just i'm a big jim jeffrey's fan actually and yeah. you know i listen to his podcast i've you know i listen to other stuff he's done his, his tv show um and and I went up and I was completely expecting to bomb. I nearly dropped out. I nearly I nearly dropped out. It was a week before my uh So You Think You're Funny semi mm-hmm. and and the last thing I wanted was to knock my confidence. So I thought, what well, I'm gonna go there. I'm not gonna be the guy that emails the comedy store and says, I'm sorry, I don't wanna be here. Yeah. Um and then I'm gonna go tell no one, eat shit, and then just never think about it again. I thought I'll last twenty seconds and just go. Yeah. And uh, turns out there was a couple of friends in the audience that had just turned up because they, okay, yeah, they, 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 well, they were there. Um, and I went up and my opening joke just, you know, it just something just lands and it just yes. landed really well. And that noise that comes from from though that packed in three or four hundred people, whatever it is, that noise is like you, I just I remember that that Jim Jeffries words like in my head. And I was just like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's real. That, for me, that was a real sort of moment like that. Um, yeah, and so there's, there's and there's as well my showcase with Logan Murray. That was the first time I'd been in front of an audience that weren't comedians, um, and it felt really good. Yeah. It was like I felt like it was the first time like I'd felt like in control. Yeah, and it was great. You know, it was a, it was a really good night. But there's been loads. You know, there's so many good nights out there and and good moments that. The list, the list would be longer than the worst ones, like because I enjoy because I like well I love it, you know, because it's it's so good. Not because oh I'm so good, I've got so many 
Better, better not <laughs> cut this cut this bit out, Mark, because this is this is awful. No, it's no, not. I've got, no, I, 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 well, I just had so much fun. Um, I, you, you, you just have so much fun up there that um, there's so many good moments. Up, you know, it's, it's great, and there's so many good nights and people who run them as well. So, did you um, pass King Gong? No. How far did you get? Four minutes forty six. That <laughs> isn't feels that, isn't that a shit? so so cruel. Yeah, well, it, it, in and and actually, it's just what it is. It's a gong show. I'll go up. I could go up and do exactly the same thing and get twenty seconds next time. You know, it's just that's that's what it is. But um, yeah. but I got gigs out of it, which was really good. You know, there were some other there were people running nights in the audience who yep. who I got gigs from it. So you know it's actually something i was dreading and I've, I, I that's another thing that i found if there's a gig that i'm kind of dreading or i think oh i don't know if i can be bothered that always ends up something happening there that ends up in some weird and wonderful little story yeah yeah oh that's 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 cool I'd, yeah yeah the the gong have you, tried, have you tried king gong no i have not had the balls to do it yet <laughs> it's have... it's it's such a fun night i mean a lot of people like i i dreaded it like i absolutely dreaded it but it's such you're in the comedy store and there's just all these people and they're all rowdy and yeah. you get to and actually getting gonged off at the comedy store if you think about it in that ridiculous way is pretty funny really it's quite yeah. it's quite a fun thing to do it's it's one of those things that i i want to give a go but i think there's a um there's part of me that because i travel in from outside london mm-hmm. the the thought of going and doing a gong show and lasting 30 seconds and going i've paid 25 quid on a train it's cost me a tenner to park the car i bought a drink and i bought some food i'm 50 quid in and i've got 30 seconds out of it yeah you're like and what have i really learned but then there's part of me as well that uh, with with the gong show i did when i done beat the blackout and you notice something different about that. You, I assume you get the same at um, the comedy store is that when you're used to doing pub basements and all those kind of venues, and then you walk in, even Comedy Virgins, but when you walk onto the stage at Up the Creek, you realise this is actually a comedy club yeah. specifically designed for this purpose. So Mark, that was the first time I'd ever been to the comedy store. Like I'd never been. <laughs> and then I, 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 I got, went in there and I know, cause obviously, you know, from the videos online, you've got the big, the big comedy store logo yeah. and it's three of them. You think, Oh, that's like, this is, it's almost as if like you, you walked in there and it's like, they wanted you to make sure that you knew it was the comedy. Store. Yes. Like yes. this isn't just the comedy. This is the comedy store, you know? And, it was yeah. like, and I, it, I really felt that like, Oh, this is, this is, this is real. You know, I had, um, Oh, I, I did my my so you think you're funny heat in the backyard as yep. well and that was that was like it was my 15th gig on purpose because i thought that was the rules of the competition <laughs> um and that was you know you walk in there but that was the, the backyard was is the comedy club that i'd go to as a fan anyway because it's my nearest place yep. and i'd, I'd kind of go there so i knew that i knew that what a real comedy club felt like but um but, but yeah when you're when you're there and you know it's something else yeah just like walking on stage at, uh, uh, up the creek i mean i was crap at it before i got on but like you walk into the venue and you see the round tables yeah. and, and then you kind of have these visions or i did was that you know sometimes you see specials of uh the smaller comedians they'll pick yeah. a venue like that and it, it, it almost has the vibes of um like a bit of a wedding ceremony with the round tables and stuff like that and then a few seated yeah. things around the around the edge and you kind of like this is kind of different and you get on stage and it's like wow there's 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 a lot of people here oh really my, my first thought is wow i can't see anyone <laughs> <laughs> i can't see anyone um yeah it's my first thing well are they there <laughs> <laughs> have i just hallucinated all these people just knocking about but yeah no and i you, know what you mean there is you, a, there's you, different energy you feel surrounded but you're not cocooned so yeah. like I've never done um comedy in your eye, but I've seen the clips of it and it looks yeah. like you are basically in the middle with everybody as close to you as possible. Such a good night. I've never done that night either, but I've I go to that night yeah. as a as you know, as an audience member. Um because it's the atmosphere there is so good. I and mean, they they really do put on a good night. Yeah, so I think the I think 
as much as I'm not, I say not a fan of gong shows. I quite like gong shows in a in a sadistic kind of way. Yeah. If you're the sort of person that has to travel and you're, you know, like me thinking, if I do 30 seconds for 50 quid, that I'm paying yeah. 50 quid for, Yeah. you know, it's, um, it's a bit hard uh, to take. So yeah, okay. some of some of these some of these things I kind of um in, I kind of justify them by thinking, well, what else am I doing? Yeah, you know, is that oh, I could be at home writing? Am I fuck? Am I, I'm not writing. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm sitting here pretending I'm writing and actually just you know watching the telly. But um, no, I, I I kind of I, I like King Gong or Gong shows. I now think of as a night out. <laughs> You know, you go there, you get to see this weird little show, and then you get to be in it. <laughs> and then, yeah. and then, if you win, you win. Um, if you don't, you don't. Actually, a really good bit of advice I got given um, was: if you get through on the Gong Show, don't take it personally. If you don't get through, don't take it personally. So, yeah, yeah. it was, yeah, that was a good bit of advice. It's, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one that the whole, the whole Gong experience, especially around, I guess, around London, because it doesn't, I don't think it happens too much outside of major cities, does it? You know, you, no. you, most gigs outside of the, outside of London and stuff, just your standard kind of fare. So, so, yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing. And I can see there's a love hate relationship that a lot of people have. But it's really strange when you see, you hear stories of people that, there was one, I think, before Christmas, um, a guy I've gigged with once before, and I saw he put up a post saying he got gonged off at 4 minutes 55. Oh. And you're just like, that it almost feels deliberate. Yeah, but you know what? That's, for me, actually, that was a bit of the justification. I wasn't <laughs> going to take, I wasn't going to, I'd say I wasn't going to let it go to my head if I got through. I would have <laughs> been the worst pain in the ass. No one would have, everyone would have heard about it for years. Yeah. If I if I got through on the five minutes, um, but for me that was almost like I called it a gentleman's win, where yes, I got yes. to four forty six. I didn't get over, but I didn't I didn't tank it, and I thought, yeah. well, okay, I'm calling that a gentleman's win, um, <laughs> just to, just to keep just for my own ego. <laughs> no, no, I, I I actually I actually think that's actually quite a good way of looking at it. I think it's um because I again I have this thing with um general competitions in yeah. in comedy because because co- i've discussed it with other people but because comedy is so subjective um yeah i find that you know you do a clap you go to one and you do like this clap off and everybody goes to them going oh, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it doesn't matter and you see the person that wins and goes ah, really yeah, yeah. You bought well the most friends well done congratulations well there are a few competitions that kind of are set up not to not to encourage that you yeah, know, that, that it's not who brings the most friends, but um, but again, you're right. You know, subjective and so in. But they're good gigs competitions. So like that's I, I. To be honest, like I'll be you know completely open. Uh, I when when I first when I first started, you know, this is this has all been a year, right? Yeah. But when I first did a few competitions, and I was like, I don't understand why I didn't do better in this competition, and then. The way the way that I look at it now is, if you do these competitions, and you get you know you get past the first or second round or whatever, mm. um, it's an opportunity for a really good gig. I mean, I recently did um, the uh, Leicester Square um, Comedian of the Year, yes, thing. Um, and you get to you, you know you get to perform in the Museum of Comedy in that basement, you know, and it's and it's a great because it really, it's a really nice you know really nice packed in little yeah little venue um, and you just you, you you kind of got to be grateful for that you know you do because it does it does sting when your name isn't called out at the end you know? yeah but but you do get that oof. but then you know you've got to see the positive in it and think well actually I, you know this was a really nice audience i had a lot of fun and and that was cool yeah yeah, yeah. i guess we all just want that little bit of validation for ourselves don't we that's why we're all here yeah isn't it isn't it we're all a little bit broken and and yeah that's that's why we're we're here it's a bit of validation yeah i, I did like one of the uh i did a gmb night an open mic their um new act competition and yeah. uh the first half wasn't great but it, it, the yeah. first half just wasn't i just didn't think much of it and then you got to the the i actually saw kyle in the toilets at half time and he, he said when are you on i said oh, i'm second in the 
you know, after this. And he said, uh, he said, I think you've got quite a good chance tonight. And I was yeah. like, I'm not sure if I should take that as a compliment or as a dick. <laughs> because <laughs> then it hasn't been so great you've got quite a good chance and well, no, so yeah i did mine and i i came off and i looked at my mate and he went nailed it it was, yeah. it was the best one i've ever seen you do that was perfect and i sat down yeah went, yes yeah yeah oh, there's a chance there's just a chance then every single person after me smashed it out of the park <laughs> and i just sat there like further back in my seat going that one chance i got the, for validation of it's good. It's really good, and it's just yeah. Gone, but you did get that validation. Your your pal said to you that was the best you'd ever yeah. seen you. You know, and that, and you felt like you nailed it. And that's yeah, you know, that's good. And if if they're laughing, right, then you know, if people yes. are laughing, then that's great. You know, because that's that's good, right? That's why we're that's why we write jokes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I know. It's 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 just that you know you know what it's it's that little bit of it's when you there is a bit of a sting. Yeah, yeah. there is a bit of a sting. You do think. Why the fuck? You know, what, what, yeah, but I've I've learned to quickly quiet that voice because it would just sort of like yeah, it eats you up a bit, eat me, eat me up, yeah. And but uh, but but I, but I enjoy comp- like actually GMB competitions really really good good for that. They really pack it out down yes. there. And I all the I've the, all the ones that I did and were at the Albany, um, and that was such a good venue for it because it really did pack it out. And then the atmosphere was good. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and well, actually, when I look back on those nights, uh, you know. I, I, they were great and i really enjoyed them yeah oh they're, they're so much fun they are a bit long but they are so much fun they are so yeah, I, oh, yeah. I, yeah. the the quality of the people that come on there there's always some really 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 good ones and this is how kind of i become a fan as well at the same time because i've done two of the nights now and each mm. time the person i voted for who i thought was best has won yeah and it's like yeah i you know, I, I kind of, it, it gives me a little bit of satisfaction thinking that, yeah, I, I, I picked the right person. Yeah. Kind of thing. Like people yeah. like, I saw, um, but again, it's subjective. There's some, there's some acts that are so silly and yes. you'd never see, you'd never, and this is actually the beautiful thing about the open mic circuit is that there are some acts that are so silly and would never, you know, would never really, you wouldn't expect to see at comedy clubs, but actually, you know, it's the only place you'd ever see him. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's and it's and it's and it make you laugh like a drain. You know, <laughs> the fact of it. No, it, it, it's a very. Um, I don't know how to describe it. It's the I did um, the one thing I, I actually I, I quite liked, and I, I think um, I'm not sure if you. I think I'm not sure if you've done it or not. Gary Walsh's night. Clap back to reality. The competition. No, I've I've not. I've, I've but every time I see Gary, we're like, oh yeah, we'll come do the night. And for some reason, I've just not. Yeah. But no, I want to do Gary's night. I, I, I well, done, Gary's a funny guy. Yeah, I, I did his his night one night, and um, the really good thing about his version of the competition is you don't vote for who's first, second, or third. Every you vote on a scale of one to five for every comedian on how good you think they are. Yeah, so the, um, the Cav does that as well. Yeah, so you're never judging it against somebody else. Yeah, as a deliberate. Oh, they were the best. They were second. Though you go, okay, that person made me laugh as much as Lee Evans did in the nineties. Five. <laughs> that person yeah. done whatever. That was a three to me, and and you kind of get a fair representation of everybody gets a score. If you know what I mean. Yeah, they don't tell. Well, actually, I know. So the the Cav do that for their mini plastic crown competition. Yeah, they don't tell you the score; they just tell you who won. Um, but but yeah, that is a good that is a good way of that is a good way of doing it. I think it's um, I think it's the best way of doing it personally. But you know, each to their own and all of that. And I'll probably talk about these type of competitions probably in most episodes (laughs) because just let it go. Just let yeah, it go. Yeah, just, just yeah, just let it, just let it go. Just forget it ever happened. Um, <laughs> but I guess it kind of leads into one. What would you like to see change on the open mic circuit? If you could change one thing, I, I do you know what I? I will, you, you sent me this question, and I really had trouble answering it, like to myself, because yep. I don't know. Because there's things, obviously, that the things that frustrate me about the open circuit are the the actually the reasons why it needs to exist you know like they you know the nights can sometimes 
go i mean for me it takes typically an hour and 20 odd minutes to get back from most of these nights mm-hmm. and, and then i've got a day you know obviously i've got a day job yeah um which starts reasonably early so you know i think i wish this didn't end at a certain time but if it didn't you know then we wouldn't be able to test our material in front of people and listen to other people's material so yeah it you know that that and it's hard to change that. The only way to, to do that is more nights. But, you know, there's already, every time there is a new night, it's immediately booked. So it's one of those exponential yeah. problems. Um, I think, if, I think my only, the only thing I'd like to see kind of changes, and it's, this is unique, I think, to the London open mic circuit, is that if you look at what's happening in other parts of the country outside the M25, um, you know, places like Liverpool, yeah. for instance, or, you know they're the comedians are taking more risks um and they're funny you know people they're taking more risks right here i think that and this is myself included um and i i find i'm worried to take risks in case you know i upset someone or i'm you know or all of a sudden it's like oh he's shit you know yeah. that's exactly what we were saying earlier um but there's there's a lot happening outside the M25 that that where people are, are taking more risks and I think that that's something that we need to change about the open mic circuit. And I'm not talking about being like edge lord and talking about yeah. all sorts of horrible stuff, but um, I think we need to. A lot of people link comedy with their personality, right? Yeah. You know, it's part of. And if you hurt, if you you know, it, it can be it's separate right it's it, it is separate and i think we need to take a few more risks as comedians on the open mic circuit it's something i've actually tried to do recently um like i did um i did a character that was almost improvised and there was some of my um jokes that i put in um but i was for the first time in a long time i was really nervous yeah when i went on because i was taking a big risk like i had no idea what was going to happen um and then and and i felt i felt like i did when i first started to chase yeah. that first high uh, so i think the answer to that first problem you had and this one is to comedians need to take more risks um and and be scared to fail a little bit better i think yeah yeah that's, that's a fair one so you did um so you think you're funny yeah uh that culminated in a trip to edinburgh yep so for anyone that doesn't know, give us a rundown of the whole process and what happened and how how it went. Um, so it was a weird thing. So I I came off of my first couple of gigs with that high, and I saw the advert for So You Think You're Funny. I knew what So You Think You're Funny was because obviously they got you know the a lot of good alumni in the winners. Yeah. So I felt all cocky and thought, yeah, newcomer competition. That sounds good. And then there's a bit, I was like, okay, let's set, check the eligibility. And it said 15 gigs by June. And I got a bit confused by that. And I was like, okay, so it's for people that have done under 15 gigs. Yeah. So I made sure that my heat was my 15th gig. Just so I was an absolute stickler of the rules. It turns out that's not the rule. Right. So um, it turns out that's not what happened. Uh, what happened. So I, uh, I turned up at the backyard from my heat and it was packed yeah fully fully packed and uh i was very nervous like to the point where um my so i spoke to firstly i met some some of the other comedians that were doing do, obviously doing that beforehand they were really really nice um louis mclean that was his that was his semi-final mm-hmm. i think i think tash klusky was there as well um really some really funny uh comedians come over from ireland ellen riley and and uh, uh dan stevenson uh and it was just a really you know it was really good to meet up with them beforehand and but finding out that all of these people had been going for a, a lot longer yeah but they, they'd followed the rules like they'd follow the rules like they'd not they'd only been going really for a year yeah but i was like i've you can only enter it once i was like i fucked it you know this yeah. is a stupid idea um and i was so nervous i was i was on in the third section i think um and they make you sit at the side and uh and my mouth was dry i hadn't i don't really eat before a gig because it yeah. makes me feel all sluggish yeah, yeah um so my mouth was dry and i was drinking like pepsi max <laughs> um and my mouth was dry and my stomach was empty so i was starting to like my stomach started to rumble and 
and I was starting to burp. Right. So <laughs> I was just sitting there thinking, no. So what I started doing was to keep my mouth wet and not drink anything because I was burping. I started like drinking from the bottle and then spitting it out into the bottle. And I looked like an, like the guy, there's a, the guy next to me was a really, really funny comedian called Harry Petit, who is an Essex based comedian. And he looked at me and he put his hand on my shoulder and was like, are you, are you, are you okay? And I was like, you need to leave me alone. I just need to, eat. this is a ridiculous situation. Um, I went up um, and it, you know, the, the set landed and I was, it was really good. I really had good fun. And that was like one of those really good moments. And when something happens in a big room like that as well, it's just like, obviously I'd only done a few gigs before that, mm-hmm. but then the, what happens is when sometimes a laugh will bounce off the back wall and take, it comes back twice. Yeah. So one of the first things you learn, you learn like when you, you know, from people like advice that I was given is, you know, you'll, you will yeah, you know, I kept like saying my like not waiting for the audience to finish laughing their jokes and just carrying on. Yeah, and that's one of the first you know one of the first things you learn. So that was a it was great. Um, and then it was a couple of weeks before I'd been to the backyard as like a like a normal like an audience member, and I'd asked them, uh, "Oh, what do I need to do to to play here?" You know, just as a thing. And they yeah. went, uh, "Come talk to us when you've done 150 gigs." Yes, and I was like, "Okay." Uh, that, i took that as the politest fuck off i've ever been given um, <laughs> but then um after that 15th gig um you know they came up afterwards and said would you like to come back and i was like wow yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and i was but I was, stupid. I was like you know i haven't done 150 gigs and they were just like just shut up yeah <laughs> just, just shut up i was um, the same but, but then um i realized how like inexperienced i was and i was like well, um, you find out in the April bank holiday um, whether you're through, and then from then I had to just quickly gain experience. So yep. I was gigging every night, um, you know, twice on a Sunday. You know, you do G and B in the afternoon, then do shtick in the evening. Yeah, um, you know, seven or eight times a week doing the same material. Which, when I look back on, I kind of look back on a little bit weird because a lot of comedians who were starting at the same time with me have now got whole new. You know, they were writing and coming up with new material. I wasn't. I was just bedding down the material yeah, yeah. that I was doing, and 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 just trying to and just trying to be as confident as I can with it, really. And and then I got to I got to a point where I just completely burnt out. Like I did. I remember I did one gig up in Palmer's Green where I was just. I, I look back on that go, I shouldn't have done that kick. I was just too just too burnt out. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, I went to Edinburgh. Um enjoy I didn't, you know, didn't drink a drop, kept it all, you know, kept it all super professional, went and did um went into the semi final. And it was just something else, you know, it was <laughs> you know, you're in the guild you're in the gilded balloon in that big room. I went to see um the semi final the night before with, yeah. with Lou McLean in it and uh, Kim Policella and I think Chantel Nash won that one. Um, but yeah, it was. Yeah, I went to see that, and th- and that was like, okay, this is the room. This is what it feels like. And the night was 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 crazy. You know that the the little group of us that were in the semi final was kind of. It felt like we went for a little baptism of fire. Yeah. Um, and they were, you know, like Beth Fox was in that. She opened the show. And when when I was like looking at who else is in the semi finals, I saw Beth beth set i was just like oh she's got it you know that that, this is this is her night um and she was brilliant um you know uh ninico was there you know she was she was great um it was it was it was um uh connie yates was there as well Mm -hmm. and he was great it was it was such a good night at the end afterwards that you get to go up to the bar at the top and meet some you know the judges and some comedy agents and stuff like that and that was that was cool but you kind of on this weird sort of adrenaline high. Yeah. Um, and I was, my plan was, was to go and get really drunk afterwards and go and have a good, good, good fun. But I didn't in the end, I ended up walking home to leave. Um, and so, you know, just, just on pure adrenaline, just sort of walking like going, what the hell just happened? Yeah. And then in the morning had the worst hangover I've ever had. And I only had like a drink. You know, it's yeah. just like it was an adrenaline hangover. And there's a pic. I did a set the next day at a friend's, at a friend's um, f- uh, free fringe gig, and uh, there's a photo of me beforehand. I look like 
death. You know, <laughs> look like absolute fucking death. Um, but actually, and that, but that gig was great as well. So there's a guy called uh, uh, Jürgen who does he he does this like uh the germans are coming he's a clown type guy and he's he's really lovely lovely guy really really funny and he packed that room out every day yeah um but that gig was i needed it like that was after say you know i did that gig and it was a good gig it was a nice warm room it's the middle of the day in edinburgh and it was it was great but the competition gave me something to focus on you know i probably would have just done it one or two a week forever yeah um but I needed to I needed to do it. I needed to give it my absolute best shot. So I just thought uh it made you know, I, I think without the competition I wouldn't have you know I, I I wouldn't be as confident as I feel now. Uh when I you know, if I go that sounds really dickish. Like, no, oh, no, yeah, no, so, not at all. Yeah, I feel so confident when I go out. But I, I, I think it made me better. You know, it made me better than I would have been. I probably would have where I am now, I probably would have been in a year's time. Yeah. No, I, no, I completely understand what you mean. the the whole The whole um, way we approach the stage now, I think, just as 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 you do more and more, you become a bit more confident. You know what to expect. It's not a surprise, and it's just human nature. You just feel that a little bit more comfortable. But yeah, it's never dickish to say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, uh, no, yeah, oh, yeah, you know, look, you know if, I wouldn't be as confident as good as I am now if it wasn't for you know all the hard work I put in. It was no, it was just, I just got so many different new experiences, and um, and, and and you know that just all helps, doesn't it? It helps you on the night. And actually, one of one one of my memory, one of the, like the big memories that I've got about being in comedy was I remember when I was being up on that stage and I'd worked so hard, and then I saw the light come on at six minutes. And I was just like, "Oh, this is over." I remember thinking, "I mean, this is this is the end of this little journey on yeah. this little road." Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm, that's one of those little memories that have burned in to my to my head. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so, another interesting um, thing I like to talk about here is um, it doesn't have to be your favorite joke, but a joke you like, but also how how it how it evolved, how it how it became. How you got that joke, but then also have as your experience has grown, has it evolved and changed and tightened and even like flip flopped around in how it's said and stuff like that. I've had to take it out of my set. <laughs> this is it. My favourite jokes aren't the audience's favourite jokes. <laughs> um, and again, this is really difficult because I really I didn't want to sound like oh yeah, this joke that I wrote was amazing and I'm going to sit and you know talk about it. But um, so. I'll do you a deal. I'll talk about my favourite ones that I've written. If I can mention some jokes from other people that are on the circuit that I that just are so silly and make me laugh. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I have a joke uh, that I've, t- I, you know, I actually it was in my "So You Think You're Funny" set, and I nearly took it out, but I felt it was the audience could take the joke because um, some audiences don't, and it's kill me. This is the joke kill me because I do a joke about my dog and I live on my own. So the joke is. Actually, there's a joke that precedes it that I've had to take out because no one ever laughs at it, but I, I love it. So I talk about like um, women's profile pictures on like dating apps and social media, and always holding a drink. Yeah, it's like here's me holding a drink, and I do this like over the top impression, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah, but then I'll say, you know, I'll go like, uh, yeah, it'd be all cocky. Yeah, you know, like we get it. You like hydration, <laughs> but I live alone. <laughs> you know, it's that, yeah, and that's the the joke is actually that I live alone because I'm trying to be this like cocky piece of shit and I'm not. Um, but then I go, no, I don't actually live alone. I live with my dog. He's my best friend. We do everything together, but a man has needs, which is why I keep a jar of peanut butter in the bedside cabinet <laughs> and then let it sit for a little bit and go, you know, and then I have to slip on a VR headset and pretend that he's a better looking dog. You know, that's, <laughs> that is my favorite joke that I've written, but it really can, it's not trustworthy. It can really, really split a room. It's, you know, yeah. like I had a gig, I had a gig outside of london recently where i was doing okay and then i, I thought okay the audience can take this joke and it killed the set like killed it dead they were like disgusted oh by dear. It. um but that is that yeah, that's probably my favorite jokes that i've written the first half of it with the here's me and the drink no one likes it um the second bit is um is it can really kill a set and it has really has like yeah really bitten me <laughs> uh, no i i like it I don't know. 
it's, yeah. it's, it's good. It's, it's good. It, it's good. It's it's a. It, I think it's funny, but some people really don't. And as I found out up the creek, <laughs> <laughs> is that what caused the furore then? Yeah, that's the joke. Yeah, yeah that's the joke that caused the caused the aggro. But, wow. Uh, About yeah, it. yeah. Dear oh dear. Yeah. I have, just... a, I have a joke that people like that I hate as well. I had a joke, I've taken it out and I was, I was talking, I talk a bit about, I'm from Romford, you know, which is in Essex. Yep. And, uh, and the, I talk, I asked my mum for some medical advice and uh, I told her I had an ear infection. She went, oh, TikTok says you could put one of these candles in it, put a candle in the ear. And I go, candle in the ear isn't my favorite Elton John song. <laughs> And I hate that joke, and because it, it doesn't make any sense, no. it doesn't make it makes no sense. But people, people have a giggle at it, so I reluctantly kept it in my so you think you're funny set because that's one of the rules as well. You can't change your set. Yes, and there's a, and, and a lot of comedians will be like, oh, so and so changed their set. It's like, oh, well, yeah, okay. <laughs> so the flip side to that was what? What other jokes did you say you're going to say? Actually, first one's one of yours, Mark. I like, I, and it's a completely visual gag. Is that when you come on with your "I'm not David Bedil" T-shirt? Yeah. I remember seeing it for the first time, thinking, "Ah, oh, this is great. I love this." <laughs> um, it was really good. But I've got a few. Um, uh, so, and these are friends. This is kind of a little shout out to some friends, but yeah. other ones that I've seen on that that I think about that pop into my head, little earworms. Um, yeah. Gra- um, so Gracie M. Yeah. Has uh, has a joke. Um, that so it talks about like uh, she's from Venezuela, v- Venezuela, and the yeah, and you know the the, the inflation's a problem, and the cheap uh, and people are just living on beans, which is the cheapest way to get gas for under a dollar. And for some reason, <laughs> that joke just <laughs> it just sits in my head. Um, Emmy Files has got one as well. I don't know if you've met Emmy. She's yeah. she's very very funny, and she's just got this joke. And it, it, for, I can't I can't work out why it's funny, but it just tickles me. Uh, she goes like. Um, you know, you can all guess where I'm from. I was actually born in uh, in Matalan, <laughs> and for some reason, I just I just sit there thinking about it. I was like, why was she born in Matalan? It's a uh, it's great. It's a great joke. Um, uh, Dmitry uh, Bakhanov. He's uh, he's a really good comedian. He's got one called. Uh, he has a joke where because he, he's half Russian, half Ukraine, yeah, and just calls himself his own worst enemy. <laughs> and I just think, oh, that's so good. I love that. It's just like I, it's one of those jokes. Where I think, oh, I wish I'd, I wish I'd written that because yeah. that's just brilliant. I can't write that. I am not Russian or Ukrainian. Yeah, but you get jealous of that. You think, oh god, that's great. Um, uh, Louis McLean. He's one of my favorite one of my favorite acts to watch. Um, he has a joke about how his dad's a black cab driver, and uh, he's he's you know he's only ever seen the back of his head. He's never seen the man, and that makes me <laughs> uh, just like, every time I hear it. Um, I think it was actually one of his I heard the other day. I'm I'm ninety percent sure it was him. There's a uh, blackout put out his his um one on there when he does the talking about where he goes to where you go to a bridge. I'm not going to ruin the oh, whole yeah. joke. So there's no yeah, jumping. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no jumping. <laughs> not today. It's just the way he delivers it. Yes, he's, he's he's right in his like tight as shit. It's brilliant. He's a very very talented guy. Um, um, we, we, he's a, a, probably a, a friend of both ours. Um, uh, Phil, corporate Phil. Yes, in uh, in GMV, he has a he just has it's just that word thinkwalk. Just yes, just gets me every time. I've heard it so many times, but I just I, I love it. And hear it. And lastly, Carwin Blaney sets. I love Carwin sets about, and and lately the one that he's done about poetry. If anyone gets a chance to go see that, I was crying at the back of uh, at the back of uh, the G and B night when he did that, and it was just brilliant. Yeah, it's brilliant. I, I there's two actually. While you're while you've been talking, though, that 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 jump out to me about other people that we've both seen. Ebby's uh, Moroccan Prince. Yeah, right. I yeah. think that's great. And yeah. the, the the joke one it must have been one of the very first ones I ever saw at GMB was um Declan. Declan Evans. Is that De- Declan Evans, yeah, yeah. Yeah, his first his very first joke he usually tells of um you know The pub about, quiz. Yeah, the pub quiz. And the first question yeah, is what yeah. the fuck are you looking at? And it's <laughs> yeah, just like it's you just joke. set the whole tone. It's just it, it's such an easy joke. It's almost even predictable. Yeah. But the way yeah. he delivers it and it just it, it sets the tone for his whole set, and it makes yeah. it immediately. It, it it's it's just laughter. Yeah, and yeah, you just yeah. there's no there's no there's it doesn't feel like it's hard work after. No, no, he's um and he he 
De- Declan is really good at like you can see he's he's just in charge. Yes, he's he's yeah he's good. He needs to be out there more. He really does. I he's on- a good guy. I, I honestly think he has a really really bright future in this industry. Yeah, yeah he's one of those. Yeah, he, he, he's 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 just one of those that's probably uh, I'm guessing, but he's probably got on stage once and and it's hit off and and that's it. And yeah, he's, he's off. He's, he's off. off. Yeah, he's off. He's off to the races. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's an interesting one. So yeah. I like I like that. I love talking about other comedian stuff because you, you see, because we're all in this right, and everyone's so nice. This is my, actually my favorite thing about comedy, and there is just just the you know you get to meet all these sort of weird and wonderful people and. You know, some of some of my closest friends now who I didn't know a year ago. Yeah. You know, I didn't know before I did this, and now, you know, uh, I, I couldn't. You know, I I want to think I've only known this person for a year. You yeah. know, it's just it's just ridiculous. Um, and I, I love I love like just watching other people malfunction up there because that's what we are, right? We're all just sort of yeah, just just breaking in front of people and watching other people, you know, see them malfunction on a stage. For, to make people laugh oh, it's yes. just it's just it's just so much fun okay here's a little fun one for you uh, Go on. so if you were to become super super famous imagine the scene you're walking out in front of five thousand people at hammersmith apollo right what would your walk-on music be <laughs> so i can't ta- I know, I, the thing is i can't take anything seriously so the first one i was thinking about there's a song called squidward and snows by cupcake is who is like an american okay uh female rapper uh which is it's an oh, it's an absolutely awful funny song um that would be if that would be my first like just to see people's faces because it's a uh, yeah that yeah that's a weird song but i if i was thinking you know if i wanted something because i actually have a playlist that i listen to before that's the thing that i gets me in the mood that i've got like a little thing that i listen to on the train and there are certain songs that i'll listen to before big gigs because i'm very superstitious okay I'm like a su- uh, um uh and one that really gets me going on those is i love i'm a big acdc fan yep. my favorite band in the world uh i'd love to either and and def leopard as well to my big so i'd either have um are you ready by acdc because that'd be pretty cool yeah to walk out to. you'd feel like billy big bollocks if you oh yes that. Uh, or uh, pour some sugar on me by Def Leppard all day. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant song. I like, I like them too. I like them too. You, just, you, just, you had me afraid when you said ACDC because I think because of um, you've seen Paul Smith. Oh yeah, walks yeah. out to back, back and black, isn't it? And yeah, that yeah. just yeah, when that hits, you're like, ah, that's that's cool. That's really, really, really cool. Uh, Jim Jeffries walks out to. Uh... I think he walks out to Back in Black as well. Does he? He walks out. No, sorry, walks off stage to it. Oh, uh, okay. Um, he does. Oh, uh, yeah. But now, uh, AC, ACDC. How about you, Matt? What's your, what's your song? Have you answered this a few times? I've already, answered or? this once, and I've had yeah. my mind changed. Oh, yeah. Because my my theory my theory was that you need to go out to something that's that's high energy, pumping, etc. But then, if you if your first joke isn't of that high energy nature then the room's going to fall. So yeah. It actually forms part of the set. And my original one for all the nineties kids out there is Chumba yeah. Wumba Tub Thumping. Yeah. That's good. Cause I think yeah. that gets people in the mood, but now I'm not so sure if it would fit. The set would have to be, it would have to have that first joke would have to follow that kind of pace and theme. If you know what mm. I mean, rather yeah. than going, hi, I'm not David Baddiel. It's like, the, the the mood drops. Yeah, but you know what? I think that kind of works because David Baddiel, nineties, that sort of era, it kind of that would work, wouldn't it? I, I think I, if I was to keep that, and uh, this obviously this is completely theoretical, yeah, 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 what anybody's yeah. thinking. If I was to keep the t-shirt <laughs> and that kind of thing in it, I would have to walk off to Three Lions. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like, tell you who's. I tell you what. Whenever I think about this sort of stuff, Peep Show, the the show, um, was really good at this. The sometimes the music they chose for the end credits was just like a joke in itself. Yes. Like there's an episode where Jez is talking about like his uncle that's died, and he uses uh, Enya as a like <laughs> as a substitute for Jesus in because he was religious. And at the end, you just kind of forget about the Enya thing, and then they play Sail Away over the credits, <laughs> and it just gets me every time every time i see that um uh yeah it's great but but yeah i think uh, and actually we do a little bit of this with the um 
the podcast. I'm, I'm allowed to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. We've got a whole section coming up about that. So one, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll wait for that then. I'll wait for that. Okay. <laughs> so a couple more um, kind of standard sort of t- things. So anybody that is thinking of getting into this, getting into open mic, what's the one tip you'd give them? Um, have fun. Just, I just have fun with it. Um, and that's been whenever. I've, so there's I've, a few things that I've learned that I could pass on. Firstly, is the audience is never the problem, right? If they're not laughing, it's not them. Yeah, it's you, right? You're the one that's in charge. Um, and it's not them. If it's oh, the audience was a bit down, then it's your job. It's your job is to make them happy. So you know, the audience is never blame. They're always, but never beat yourself up, right? Just, just keep going. Have fun. Um, and that's in with writing as well. Like I, you know, I, I fell into the trap of trying to count syllables and using all these weird formulas and stuff like that. And actually, all the jokes that I have that I work are just from actually when I write. Is I just take pick up a microphone. I keep a microphone in the stand in my living room because mm-hmm. uh, I live alone and it's <laughs> pathetic. Um, <laughs> uh, but and I just walk around and have fun. So have fun, you know, and and just don't be a dick, you know. Yeah. Just you know, just 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 in in you know just in, just enjoy it and, and enjoy all the weird and wonderful stuff because this is it, this is a unique experience yeah you know it's just it, it's just it's just fun you're gonna meet weird and wonderful people you're gonna meet people who you know shouldn't have been let out of the house <laughs> <laughs> and shouldn't have been let out of the out of the loony bin um and yeah and, and and care about it as well you know don't there's a there's a line between not getting upset about things when they don't work because you will and i have and i still yeah still do but um but care about it you know really really care about it okay um it's, here's it's... here's one last one before I take a quick short break sure how many times do you give a joke before you bin it so if you do one and it doesn't work do you go that's it or do you go i'll give it another go if that doesn't work another go if that doesn't work do you go that's it that's out never looking um, at it never been it um never been it um a good bit of advice that was given from logan murray and kyle actually who runs gmb is that there's no such thing there's no such thing as a bad joke it's just not ready it's just not developed properly because if it makes you laugh and it, if it's funny then it's kind of funny but um i've got jokes that i haven't told for a long time that i wrote at the very beginning or at the very beginning you know still yeah. have it at the, at the very beginning but um i've that i don't that I don't say anymore, but now and again I think about them and I think, oh, maybe actually that it'd be funnier now if I put that in or took that angle or yeah. And as you learn, right? As you learn, you know, my the way that one actually another another really good bit of advice actually that was given to me at the beginning was you don't know who you are on stage until you've done a hundred gigs. Mm-hmm. And at first I thought, oh, that was bullshit. And then mm-hmm. when I got to fifty gigs, I was like, oh, it's bullshit because I'm right now. And now I'm just about to touch a hundred gigs. Yeah. And I'm like, I get this because it's only really recently that I've, you know, you know, hammed up a few things and, and concentrated on a few little areas. Um, so listen, you know, hundred gigs is, is zero in terms of like who you are as a comedian. But yeah, I'd say I, 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 I like the dog joke. I say, I've dropped it. It'll come back. Yeah. When, when, or when you learn, oh, this audience might be ready for this. I'll take, I'll take this here. Um, bn and never never drop a joke just develop it just keep going have fun with it you know what can you do to to have a different angle on it you know mm. no yeah. yeah that's very true very true like the dog joke for some reason if i wanted to you know there's a there's an innocent version of that joke that a friend actually gave a friend uh who was on the course who gave me uh a bit of advice on it. it's just like oh you could have just switched it and said why uh you know um how else am I supposed to make peanut butter sandwiches in bed with my dog? You know, now it's like, when I look back, it's like, yeah, that's, that's what I should have done. Yeah. So, yeah. So don't ditch it. Just keep, just keep, just keep playing with it and see what happens. Cool. So Jim, you've got a podcast, I believe. Yes. Sell it to us. Sell it to us. I've got, yeah. So it's actually a podcast where you got a pitch. Um, <laughs> the podcast is called Pitch It Good. Um, it's about, um, it's an idea that, I actually had years ago um and it's basically uh we invite a comedian on me and a friend who have known each other for like 15 years um we invite comedians on 
who and we asked them to just come up with a film and pitch it on the spot with like characters set setting and and stuff like that and we we kind of derail it and send it in a weird direction and then and then read back the film and there's just like obviously where they started and where they finish is completely different yeah. um and it's fun to it's so much fun to do it's it's pro- I, I if if I'm really honest uh well I'm actually really honest no one cares right I'm, I'm I, I enjoy doing the podcast more than the stand up at the moment because it's just so silly yeah and stupid and you know there's a bit of is you know you, you know you can control your own destiny a little bit with it. there's no pressure to... no well, there's pressure because i mean you'll know you know doing this you, you read you know if you care about the quality of what you put out um you care about some you know you care about it you're a bit nervous that people won't like it or but we you know we made a conscious decision to throw the kitchen sink at it we thought if we're going to do this we're going to do it properly yep. because I decided to do it after the So You Think You're Funny competition. You know, I was like, I always wanted to do this 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 idea. Um, but I had this weird little dread that you kind of get on the open circuit, which everyone will, is that, you know, you're only, what happens if people stop asking you to gigs? What happens if, you know, yeah. all of a sudden you piss someone off and then you're, you're done? So I thought this is the way how I can take a little bit of control of my own destiny and, 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 and put out something that I control and I love and, and, um, and, and Paul, my co-host, I said, we've known each other for a long time. We call it our silly Billy time <laughs> where we just, it's just, it's just, we don't edit anything out of it. It's all, you know, from, we press record, we press record, you know, press stop at the end yep. and that's what goes out. Um, and it's, it's so much fun and every episode is different because everyone's got a weird and wonderful different, perspective yeah, on yeah, what I they bet. think you know what i think it's a good film but yes it's called pitch it good um and it's uh it's available on all the the things all the, yeah <laughs> that's what i'm coming to <laughs> with. i don't know if you ever like follow subscribe or what you do these days on half of these platforms but yeah or, 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 apparently uh, you know we asked i don't i don't know how the, the listeners ship goes up mm-hmm. which is good which is a good sign yeah right? it's a good sign for any podcast um and this year we're trying to we're going to make an effort into um punching punching everything up a little bit uh-huh. i think um and really you know because people like it and um and it's 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 just it's just it's just fun yeah this is really it's great fun to do oh uh, cool no I, I enjoy listening to it. i've listened to quite a few episodes and uh yeah i always come back to oh, sea wing See with yeah Kim's yeah Kim's podcast she's uh, uh she's so funny as well like that that episode was so much fun to to record because Kim's just one of those just she's like you know on energizer batteries yes just kind yes of like, and uh, she's she's really really funny that was one of my favorite episodes for sure cool um, um, but we knew you know we know like when we've, like, we've grasped Kim, Kim she's just gonna she's just gonna be brilliant yeah oh hundred percent. 100%. Um as as you found probably with uh podcasts a lot of them have to have a a little niche. So here on the Open Mic Comedy podcast our niche is using this little book. It's called The Little Book of Shit Jokes by Sid Finch. Right, okay. What I'm asking every comedian to do is to pick a joke from this book. Yeah. Use it in their set. You can just use it once. Doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, record it and post it, tag us, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The trick okay, is that's an interesting little you get to pick a joke, but you don't know what the joke is. You have to give me a page between five and ni- a number between five and 95. Okay. Five and 95. Yep. What now? Yep. This has gone live. So there's no getting out of it. They're going to hear this joke on this thing and they're going to be expecting you to put a video of you 85. saying it. 85. 85. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, you've got quite a long joke here. Oh, God. <laughs> right. Your joke to tell is, at church, a little girl tells her mother she's going to be sick. Her mother tells her to do it in the bushes. The girl leaves and comes back after about five minutes. Her mother asks her if she threw up. Yes, the girl says, but I didn't have to go round the back. There was a little box by the front door that said "for the sick." Oh, that's better than some jokes that I've <laughs> actually said on the stage. 
Like, I'm actually, I was, I was just like, oh shit, I've, I, I've told, I've told worse jokes than that. Piece of cake. But the, uh, <laughs> the, the trick is, is that if anybody does end up picking a, a joke that's already been selected, you have to go again. Okay. So no, but none of these will be repeated. Okay. So I'll, I'll send you that joke in full anyway, just so you don't Thank forget you it. Much. You may have to adjust it slightly, but if it's on the same principle. We'll make it work. We'll do it live. As I said, like I've said worse on stage. Yes. I, I have said worse. I think I had this joke. Oh, God. There's, actually, do you know what? I was, I was like, that joke I told about my dad. This is a true story, right? My dad um, my dad phones me up and goes, uh, I've got an idea for a joke for you. Oh, no. It's like, what, what is it? I go, please. Oh, I said, please don't. Please just don't. And he goes, and then uh, curiosity gets the better here and says, like, well, what is it then? And he, my dad has like a drawer full of rubber bands. He was like, you know, you could talk about my drawer of rubber bands. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, you know, you could say something like, oh, my dad's got more bands than WH Smith, you know. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, okay. And then I think I went to uh, I went to a night and I was just like, my dad phoned me the other day, <laughs> <laughs> and he's told and he's told me. To talk, you know, he's giving me ideas for jokes. I said, oh, what's your joke then? And he just said, rubber bands. And then my punchline was, seriously, I actually said this on a stage. Oh, um, I can't just go up and say rubber bands. I'll never bounce back from that. <laughs> and that, that should be in that book. <laughs> that is, you, you actually I, never know. I, I stood on a stage in front of people and decided that that was a good idea. And uh, that's. Uh, you can shorten it however you wish or whatever, but it'd be fun to try. It's a bit of a challenge. And sure. If you can fit it in, some, some may, some may not, but, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of fun out there just to make things a little bit different for people. Yeah. No, good. I'm, 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 I'll figure it I'll figure out a way. <laughs> I need to write a church routine now. <laughs> you have to write... What's the deal with church? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'll be the problem is that will be the better bit of the joke. Where someone says, "Oh, you should cut that stuff out that you wrote there." And that, that stuff there about the sick bucket. That's brilliant. That. That's what happened. <laughs> oh, thank you for the advice. Uh, it's uh, yeah. You end up writing a whole whole new routine just to fit that joke in. <laughs> yeah yeah well actually but th- yeah but this is you know this is uh, uh, one of those things like i was you know i think uh, um writing writing new stuff comes from weird little silly things like this oh you yeah know, if you've got if you've got a right routine about just play with it see what happens um you know like well one thing i was i, was, I want to write some stuff about more stuff about my dog that's clean yeah right? that, that and i thought well what do, you know dogs are like oh you know i don't want to be the guy who just says oh my dog you know he likes dog biscuits he's when he's ill he's rough i don't want to be any of that <laughs> sort of shit and then you know I, I was like, oh, so but so i was like okay what does my you know so i thought okay what would my dog's linkedin profile look like yeah you know, so i wrote like a linkedin profile for my dog i was like well actually does my dog think he works at the house <laughs> so that's my new my new thing. just something you're playing around with yeah you, yeah. you think well actually yeah is it, if he's an employee what what would he's little performance review look like and stuff like that and then from those weird little thoughts so this might actually come up with gold it's That's it's I'm... interesting isn't it how because i look back at how i've how i've basically got two two main routines that can now i've worked out a way to interchange them but it's how those routines came about is that the the, the original routine i actually ever wrote is actually about seven and a half minutes long but it all came from four words Oh, what, what, and what the those the four words were what are you thinking and it's Ooh, it's everything then stemmed from those four words to out to yeah to bring in into because it's all based around uh asking a man what he thinks and it's yeah. never a good thing to ask a man what he thinks we yeah, know that. yeah yeah just yeah we know yeah. and then it, it, he's thinking about those fucking scooby-doo slippers you bought exactly for christmas <laughs> so it, it, it's yeah, yeah. those it's that brings in the silly little things that men think about that then okay i need i need to generate a punchline from this a, a bigger laugh at the end and that's how toy story gets born and but then i, I have something at the end that i need to tie into I feel like I have to tie it and I have to tie it, but I have to create something at the start that then circles a square. Yeah. I, I kind of, that's for me, if, if I always have that, it always happens by accident. Yes. Like it's always one of those things where I've been writing something else go, oh, but I said that I, when I was thinking about that the other day and then 
somehow timed together and then you've got it. Uh, so, you know, that's so, uh, something I've, you know, I, 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 I like actually, and for me, like when I come up with a joke, it's always because I'm a story guy, yes. which is why I'm so shit at gong shows as well as not being funny, you know, <laughs> <Stop> <laughs> so, it. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, it's, it's like, so I kind of, all my, all my jokes all come from like, like, real life not the peanut butter dog joke that was a pub chat yeah right? that was that was that was a thing but they all come from real life and i just turn it into like a cartoon yes in, you know and then and then just be a little bit weird with it but um but yeah no it's it, yeah just play just play it just playing it about that's the best way isn't it just to, and 99 percent of stuff that you play with will never see the light of day but it's those little yeah little nuggets. but then what you'll find is that you may end up sneaking in little bits here and there because I, yeah, I have a joke. Go on. I have a, jo- I have a joke about um, like there was one. It came from a completely different routine. Actually, I did this routine about the district line. You know, <laughs> like, oh, oh, isn't this and about how people didn't, you know, people like to listen to their speakers loud on the thing and stuff like that. And and then I heard it a few times on the circuit. I was like, I can't tell this joke. Yeah. Um. And then, uh, but I had this. Uh, I had a joke that was messing around there. It was about how uh, there was a guy watching a youtube video about he can't sleep yeah uh you know and apparently it's these blue lights so i'm from essex so <laughs> blue lights are not a problem for us but then i, I had another routine so actually that's fun medical advice that my mum would give yeah. so then uh, that became so the, it, it just got used somewhere else so write it like play and write keep, just keep like just keep writing writing everything down and then you know in my professional comedy <laughs> opinion yeah. you know just you just you just got to have fun with it and... i do think it helps as well is that if you've got a like if you've got a microphone to hand and stuff like that on a on a daily basis or you've got a place where you can go for a bit of peace because i'm quite fortunate is there's um around here we've got um like musical rehearsal rooms where bands go and hire out like a soundproof room yeah but it's not it's not for recording but it's just for practice and you can, i can hire one of those rooms out for I think about 10 to 15 pound an hour and I'll just go in there and ask them to set up a mic and a PA system. And I'll just walk around the whole room, mumbling, talking, saying things yeah. and just seeing what comes out. And then occasionally I'll get a friend that comes along. He's a stand up as well. And we'll start bouncing ideas about and start talking and he'll do a routine and I'll say, change this, change that. And then he'll do the same to me. And, the forming of ideas from hearing from different people is is quite it's yeah. quite fun yeah it's it is uh, so what i actually one of the things i did and I, a bit of advice i give to to anyone um is i'm a stickler for like re- if you're preparing for something you need to try and recreate it but maybe a little bit harder when you're practicing it so I have in my living room, I have a microphone stand and a timer on the wall, <laughs> right? I, I, you know, I have a timer on the wall. Again, live alone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no, you know, there's no cross reference in that design decision in the house. Um, but I bought, I went and bought, like, I went and bought a microphone. I bought a cheap £10 microphone off of, of Amazon. Yep. Uh, but it was too light. So I went and bought, you know, the sm85 microphone that they use in all the comedy clubs so mm-hmm. i know how it feels yeah. and i don't then i didn't have to i had to not think about the microphone not think about the cable yeah all those sort of things so i could concentrate on what i was doing there was that um yeah that, that for me that you know and just and that's how i kind of write i walk around and just talk about it and then and then write down anything that i think is funny yeah oh uh, cool yeah Okay. Uh, well, I think that kind of brings us on to a nice little close for this. That's been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. No, thank no, thanks for having me. I've um, I've felt very exposed just like talking about myself for an hour, <laughs> uh, which is weird for a comedian because that's what we do. But um, uh, yeah, I feel it was. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Nice, uh, nice, nice way to spend a Saturday morning. Yeah. Although I know you probably don't release this on a Saturday. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's... No, no, one's, no, no one's gonna. Oh, it's not live. <laughs> I'm not listening to this. <laughs> you got to listen to Enough. it. Got to listen before you can unsubscribe first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So, what's all your? Um, just drop us what your social links are and stuff where people can find you and um, podcast and all of that kind of stuff. I uh, think so. Um, all of my socials are at Jim H Comedy um on instagram tiktok and all that sort of stuff um and the uh, podcast is called pitch it good pod 
Um, but there's links to that, and you can see I post all that on my normal stuff. But yeah, if you uh, if you want to see some really shit online comedy, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's your place, you know. No, I'll, I'll put a link to all of those in the uh, description of this episode as well. And for everyone else, for for this little podcast, we are open mic comedy pod on instagram our website is all the w's open mic comedy comedy pod.com um if any comedians that are listening to this are budding comedians or want to be comedians want to come on get on the website there's an email address at the bottom um drop me a mail or dm me on instagram and we'll try and get you on and see what we can do but yeah that's that's another episode in the bag for this. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, please do the like, subscribe, follow, whatever it is. And if you want to give us a review, that's only five stars because four doesn't mean anything. Three <laughs> doesn't mean anything. Two and one. It's zero or five. It, yeah, it's got to be zero or five. Um, that would be much appreciated. And until next time, take care and thank you very much. And keep having fun on the stage. Thanks for having me, Mark. <laughs>